Right now, Denver police are asking for your help finding a missing man. DPD says that Charles Lowry was last seen walking in the area of West 36th Avenue and North Decatur Street between 9 and 10 Monday morning. Police say the 77 year old suffers from Alzheimer's and if you see him or you know where he is, you are asked to call Denver police at the number at the bottom of your screen. The search for an inmate who escaped from a minimum restricted facility in Canyon City is over. The Canyon, the Colorado Department of Corrections announced last night authorities tracked down Leaf Glimpse. They say the 34 year old was found on DOC property around 6 p.m. Glimpse was serving an eight year sentence for burglary when he escaped from the Arrowhead Correctional Center early Monday morning. Today, Denver Public Schools will hold one last in person community meeting to discuss closures and consolidations. The district says that the changes are needed because of declining enrollment. Parents we spoke to say they don't believe declining enrollment is the reason to close schools. Many believe there are other ways to deal with the problem, such as redrawing boundary lines to make classes more even across the district. Tonight's meeting will take place at Montbello High School from 6 to 7. And if you can't make it to tonight's meeting, there will be another meeting next week, but it will be via Zoom. After that, Superintendent Dr. Alex Marrero is expected to present a list of schools to close and consolidate on November 7th. We're learning new details about the rescue from the Molly Kathleen Gold Mine Rescue last week in Teller County. The Cripple Creek Fire Chief told our partner station in Colorado Springs that two tourists climbed up a ladder to alert workers what had happened after an equipment malfunction occurred on an elevator. The tour guide, Patrick Weir, died. Half of the two dozen tourists who were trapped were brought up almost immediately, but it took about eight hours for the other half of the group to be rescued. The chief says that was intentional. There was not a crisis. Um, they needed to be cared for. We needed to get them out, but it didn't need to be at the expense of taking our time and doing it safely. Weir was training to become a firefighter in his community. The Teller County Sheriff's Office says there will be a procession on Thursday in Cripple Creek to honor him. A school administrator in Westminster has been arrested, accused of sending inappropriate photos to an underage student. Officers arrested Tate Drain on Monday. The 27 year old works at Mountain Range High School, where he has been the dean of students since August 1st. He also coached girls basketball at Mountain Range and football at Thornton High School. Drain has been placed on administrative leave and will not work or coach in the district until further notice. Police say they made the arrest after several reports were made through Safe to Tell over the weekend. Drain was booked into the Adams County. County jail on charges, including sexual assault on a child and internet sexual exploitation of a child. With just 21 days to go, presidential hopefuls are out on the campaign trail in full force, mobilizing voters to get out the vote. Former President Trump is rallying voters in Atlanta tonight, while Vice President Harris is set for a radio town hall in Detroit with host Charlemagne the God. Last night, both candidates spoke to voters at separate events in Pennsylvania, trading blows as new poll numbers show just how tight the race has become. Donald Trump is increasingly unstable and unhinged. And he is out for unchecked power. That's what he's looking for. I didn't think I'd ever say this about anybody. She's actually, you take a look at, she's more dangerous than him, but he's actually smarter than her. I never thought I'd say that. At that rally, Trump did have to cut off questioning after two audience members needed medical attention in the warm room and instead listened to music with the crowd. Vice President Harris now set for a sit-down interview on Fox News tomorrow. Well, new this morning, Election Day is exactly three weeks away from today and ballots have officially been mailed out to voters in Colorado. Now, news reporter Brianna Fernandez joins us live from the Denver Elections Office to break down when you can expect yours plus important dates. Good morning, Brianna. Hey, good morning, Corey. So a lot of the mail, uh, the mail, the ballots were sent out on Friday. Actually, some folks received it over the weekend. I actually received mine on Saturday. If you haven't received it, don't worry. You'll probably receive it either later today or later this week, but you will get it in the mail. So check those mailboxes. And just a good reminder, if you are going to be mailing in those ballots, make sure it's in your mailbox with two first class stamps by October 28th, just to make sure it arrives on time. Now, another thing that you should be doing with these mail-in ballots, make sure you sign the back of the envelope that is is required. Now, for those that are sending in your mail-in ballots, uh, if you do get it misplaced or if you lose your ballot, contact your elections office to receive the replacement. Every registered voter in Colorado will receive a ballot through the mail, but you can choose whether to vote by mail, return it to a drop box, or in person. Either way, ballots must be returned by 7 p.m. on Election Day, November 5th. If you haven't registered to vote, you can register up until Election Day. Now, election officials across the state can begin counting mail-in ballots starting next Monday, October 21st. 
Accuracy is a hot topic this election season, so officials say they run tests on voting machines every election. One of the three tests on every machine was conducted actually last Wednesday. Now, voters can track their ballots both as they're being mailed out and as they're being counted by signing up at denvervotes.org. That's why it's so important to vote early as well, too. You vote early, we're going to be able to do all that, uh, all that tabulating, everything else, all that processing, so that um, you uh, can can start uh, checking results beginning at seven o'clock and, you know, in uh, and, and intervals thereafter. Uh, we value accuracy over speed. Now, two more tests will be conducted at these voting machines closer to the election and then after the election. Also, you probably have already received your Colorado Blue Book. If you haven't, you can also look that up at denvervotes.org. We actually have that link right now at the bottom of your screen. You can see that digitally, download it, or you can go to Denver Libraries. They'll have the Blue Book as well or contact your election office. For now, I'm live here in Denver. Brianna Fernandez for 9 News. Brianna, thank you. Colorado ballots are hitting the mail and our team is making it easy for you to register to vote, understand your ballot and how to return it. Just text the word vote to 303-871-1491. We'll text you back a link to our full voter guide. And coming up starting at 630 and every half hour after, our legal expert Whitney Trailer and I broke down six of the big amendments and propositions to make them easy to understand what a yes vote means, what a no vote means and what it costs you. The family of a former Impact Plastics employee is suing the company for wrongful death, alleging the company's negligence directly resulted in his death during Hurricane Helene. The lawsuit filed by Johnny Peterson's daughter alleges several employees lost their lives because of, quote, reckless and negligent conduct of Impact Plastics and its senior management. The lawsuit says that workers asked to leave when flood water started to rise, but the company told workers to move their cars to higher ground instead. By then, it was too late. Johnny Peterson was one of six employees up Impact Plastics believed to have died in the flooding. Sean Diddy Combs has even more allegations against him this morning. Six new lawsuits were filed anonymously by two women and four men. The complaints span from 1995 to 2021 and include allegations of sexual assault and rape. All of the incidents occurred in either New York City or the Hamptons, according to the suits. Sean Combs has denied all civil and criminal claims via his attorneys. And one thing to know about your weather for today, temperatures about 10 to 15 degrees cooler than they were yesterday. We are going to be in the low 70s today, warming back up into the upper 70s tomorrow. We are going to be a bit breezy as we head Thursday into Friday. We have a system moving in and that is going to bring us more fall like weather Friday into Saturday. We are talking about showers across the plains, a snow rain mix for the foothills and a widespread snow for the mountains.